So this is basically the gist of the statement that we have put together, calling on the Prime Minister uh, Anwar Ibrahim to, first of all, uphold the rule of law so that we can have political stability and to be committed to a clean government. Do not release Najib or Rosma and all other high-profile uh, cases involving politicians in corruption. We are aware there are many others that are in the court process uh, that need to be processed by the court, uh, including Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, uh, Said Sadiq, Lim Guan Eng. All these things, let the court process them rather than applying DNAA so that they can be let off. Now, this use of the power of the AG is nothing new. We saw very clearly during the time of 1MDB itself, how when the previous AG wanted to let go of, uh, or rather wanted to charge Najib, uh, he was removed you know, from office suddenly and replaced with uh, Apandi, Apandi uh, Ali, who then using his discretion with evidence that there was no wrongdoing in 1MDB. And he continued to be the prime minister until the general election. This is the power that must be changed. At the core of this statement is really our call to initiate this reform. Uh, there are four demands uh, that we have put together in this statement. The first is to impose a moratorium in any application by the AG for DNAA or total acquittal moratorium. No DNAA of high profile cases until the separation of the public prosecutor from the AG's office has taken place. Number two, this separation legally and in the constitution should take place in a year's time, at the end of 2024, because this was already promised by the law minister Azalina of Mansai after the DNAA of uh, Zahid. She said that the, COVID, the cabinet is committed to the separation and the two task force has been formed to study. So we say expedite it and get it done by the end of 2024 so that we can be free forever from selective uh, prosecution or selective immunity from prosecution for those who are aligned with the government of the day. The third thing is to re reopen and recharge DNAA cases of politicians charged with corruption, in particular but not limited to Zahid's Yayasan Akabudi case. DNAA means you can be recharged, but oftentimes people are not recharged and then after a while they apply for a total acquittal. But we are saying that this DNAA was, was applied by the AG. The reason given is that there are new evidence and they need to investigate further. So reinvestigate, recharge so that the court can finish its job to determine guilt or innocence. Uh, number four is more disturbing also, is to not withdraw or undermine all ongoing appeals by letting appeal opportunities to lapse, as in the case of the Najib Arukandas 1MDB report tempering case. Uh, the court, I believe it was a high court, uh, acquitted them. The AG had an opportunity, a time period, to appeal the, the, uh, the acquittal, but they forgot to, not once, but I believe twice. You know, they applied for extension the first time. The second time, when they had a window to submit their appeal against the acquittal, in this case, 
the officer forgot to submit the appeal in such a high profile one MDB case and he and they are both totally let off now. Now this is totally unacceptable. You know, there should be accountability that officer concerned should be held to account. So these are the kind of matters that we are asking in this statement uh, for the AG Chambers and also the Prime Minister to uphold, uphold the rule of law. That is all we are asking. Yes, uh, not really. Uh, I think it's too early to talk about rallies at the moment. This is not what this statement is about. Uh, this statement is to um, appeal to the Prime Minister not to cross the red line. Because once you cross the red line, uh, beyond uh, rally is not the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that can happen to our country is that we will be labelled as a country that endorses corruption and people who are corrupt can get away from justice because of its change in government. The worst thing that can happen to this country is that uh, investors will look at our country as a country that do not uphold the rule of law, no different from any banana republic uh, in the world. So that is the worst thing that can happen. Do not cross this straight line. But if that's happened, then we will talk again about what we as citizens can do. Well, uh, any online petition, of course, will be online. Uh, for a long time, but I think we would like to um, run a proper campaign where we hit hundred over thousand uh, within a month or even less. And if uh, with the support of civil society and the members of public uh, and the message get out, I believe uh, a vast majority of Malaysians will support the core of this uh, statement. Uh, uh, like I say, during the last GE15, if you take that election, uh, voting as, as petition, 68% you know, voted against corruption. That's what it was. Most people who came out to vote, they are voting for a clean government. Yeah. So I would uh, like to see this petition breaking all records uh, and uh, send a strong message to the Madani government. We are looking to kind of like launch um, probably in a month or two or even beginning of next year. Uh, I think it is important, first of all, we gauge the response of the Prime Minister to our statement. Uh, if he is silent, means that uh, because this statement clearly called for him to respond uh, to our call. We are expecting a response from him. But if he is silent, we will take it that he is not taking our statement seriously. Then a, a campaign definitely will be forthcoming. Uh, but if he respond affirmatively, positively, we will want to not just take the word, his word for it, but we want to engage with him through either the law minister or through parliament to make sure that this reform is taking place. Uh, but for sure, uh, we will not let up until the reform has taken place and the AG is free from uh, uh, being politicized uh, as, as an agency, as a body.